the new heaven. Eli Weasel said in regard to God and the Holocaust in the lost version of night. This time we will not stand as the accused in court before the divine judge. This time we are the judges and he is the accused. We are ready. There are a huge number of documents in our indictment file. They are living documents that will shake the foundations of justice. Job was also ready to invite God. Job wanted God to explain to him why he, as a righteous man who followed the Lord's commandments, had so many bad things happening to him. I am sure that God is quite pleased with creation because he is perfect. And all things he creates are perfectly what he wanted for him. It is perfect for creating a heaven of angelic human spirit persons, a new heaven by the addition of a new host of angels, angel of Israel. God decided to create a new host of angels, one where he does not <clears throat> create their personality, but angelic persons who are formed as persons by their own actions and self-will. Unlike angels, we are put to a battleground of choices with our own self-will that molds and shapes us as persons. We go through a lot of adversity, and no one has gone, no people, through more adversity than the Jewish people has chosen. None. It is for them heaven is being created. Angels do not have self-will or a battleground of choices to make. Their persons are created and formed by God. God knew in the beginning that all men would suffer, the good and the bad. It is what makes our personality suitable for his purpose of creating a new host of angels. This is Isaiah chapter 65 verses 17 through 19. For behold, I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered. They shall never come to mind. Be glad, man, and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I shall create Jerusalem as a joy, and her people as a delight. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in her people. Never again shall be heard there the sounds of weeping and wailing. No more shall there be an infant or gray beard who does not live out his days. He who dies at a hundred years shall be reckoned a youth, and he, he who fails to reach a hundred shall be reckoned a curse. They shall build houses and dwell in them. They shall plant vineyards and enjoy their fruit. They shall not build for others to dwell or plant for others to enjoy. For the days of my people shall be as long as the days of a tree. My chosen ones shall outlive the work of their hands. They shall not toil to no purpose. They shall not bear children for terror, but they shall be a people blessed by the Lord, and their offspring shall remain with them. That's Isaiah 65, verses 20 through 23. So in verses 17 to 19, God is speaking of a spiritual heaven that he calls Jerusalem. Verses 20 through 23 are what heaven was believed to be like for the people of the ancient age in the Middle Ages. God's scripture is written for errors gone by and errors to come. People of ancient times in the Middle Ages thought of the dead coming back to life and living long lives in a brutal, savage time of humanity. Planting vineyards and enjoying the fruit and not having it taken by others, dwelling in a home they had built, and not toiling for others was the heaven they thought of. Not a spiritual heaven where you rise to God and live with Him. To them, God was always angry and the cause of their troubles. Isaiah 66, verse 22. 
For as the new heaven and the new earth which I will make shall endure by my will, declares the Lord, so shall your seed and your name endure. God says he's creating a new heaven and a new earth. The new earth will be just as this earth is when this earth is no more. When the final judgment of entry to heaven is made by the Creator who holds the souls of all men in his hand. The new heaven with the seed and name of Israel shall endure. And God will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in her people. While the new earth is being formed, God calls the new heaven Jerusalem as a direct reference to heaven being for the Jewish people what the name Israel shall endure. I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have made ready. I'd like to point out when, uh, the verses uh, 20 through 23 for the people of antiquity in the Middle Ages, because that's where their beliefs were. We know, according to science today, nobody lives to be 100 and is a tenant of youth. If they were a tenant of youth, that would mean the last man had just raised to a 1,000. That doesn't happen. That's how you know it's for them. But somehow, these phrases get worked into the Messianic era. And, and that, that's where Judaism has just fallen down. And just just completely lost their way. Completely lost their way. Taking these kind of things that God puts in for the people who first read the book, or first heard the stories, hardly anybody could read. It was for them first. And you have to you, you, you cannot just rely on your sages and rabbis and your talent, which is based on stories from antiquity and through uh, up into the Middle Ages. You gotta reread, you gotta look at it and say, oh, oh, this may be an idea. That's the history said, well, we know it can happen, and we know God and his power has never changed the minds and will of all men on the planet, or even a small part of them. We have to rethink this. Hey, I know. Let's look at the covenant of friendship that comes with Mushiach. And God returns to his temple, and the angel of the covenant that you desire delivers. The covenant of sin and forgiveness. Pay heed to him. I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have made ready. Pay heed to him and do <coughs> and obey him. Do not defy him. For he will not pardon your offenses, since my name, Hashem, is in him. God is in his angel. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit of God. And the angel of his presence and the angel of the Lord. That's who he's referring to. That's from um, Genesis chapter 23, verse 20 through 22. But if you obey him and do all that I say, all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. God God's presence. And you find this in Isaiah 63. Judaism doesn't recognize it, so it doesn't exist. <clears throat> There's an angel of his presence. An angel of his presence. That is also, in the next verse, the Holy Spirit of God, who is grieved if the Israelites disobey him. Grieved. Holy Spirit is a person. Judaism doesn't recognize that, and it causes all kinds of interpretive problems and commentary problems in other areas. This is the best way to describe it. Angel of his presence. Wherever God's presence is, the angel is. Okay? Wherever his Holy Spirit is, God is. I mean, my, my spirit is always with me. Doesn't take off and come back at other times. You know, you're in your spirit. Your spirit's in you. Okay. Here's the elements, like a cloud of God's presence. It's his mind. Okay, it's where he feels he is, just like us. Wherever I go, my mind goes, and where I'm at, that's where I feel I'm at. The angel, the angel, God created an angel, and instead of a body that is human form with wings, 
His body is the Spirit of God. He is both the angel of His presence and the Holy Spirit. And He is a person. So, it, and God says, I am in Him. So these, these two clouds, different elements. The elements of God's mind are different from the elements of Spirit. But like two clouds, they have drifted together. They're still separate. God's still one. He created the angel. But they're together. So when the Spirit alights upon a man and enters him, so does God himself, his very presence. So in Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2, the Spirit of God alights upon the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse, which is the descendant of King David, the anointed one, Messiah, God alights upon him too. He becomes a man and divine beings. The divine beings being God and uh, the angel of his presence. That's the divine beings. And of course, Judaism, because they don't recognize the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit, when Jacob says, I wrestled with the man and the divine beings, they, Judaism interprets that to be he wrestled with an angel. No, he actually wrestled with the man. And there just happened to be a couple of divine beings there who were uh, orchestrating the entire event so that God could speak through the man to Jacob and rename him Israel. In heaven, now I had to give you all that for this. In heaven, God is in you as my name is in the angel of his presence. That is what is meant when God says, before they pray, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will respond. He knows what you're going to do and think before you do in front of you. The information of our minds gathered by our eyes and our ears is interpreted by our spirit and soul, which is the person that you are. A soul is like DNA that combined with spirit creates a person. So basically, you can't just have a soul. If you see a reference to soul or spirit, it's, it's really a reference to a person. And it's a combination of both of them. Which is the person that we are. Our spirit can read the electrical impulses chemicals and different in different tissues of various parts <laughs> of various parts. God dictated all this to me. And <laughs> I gotta read through it. I'm required to. I get to ad lib or I get to summarize things, but pretty much I'm, I'm required to get to uh, the way he wanted it to exactly the sound read and I'm having a problem. Okay, spirit is a very complicated element of the unseen realm of God. If our minds were our, our brains, were our thoughts, the voice within us, and the person that we are, then we could never go to heaven. We would die, never to awaken again, as our minds, our brains, go to dust. You don't have a mind in heaven. God has to be the information of your mind. And I, In my capacity as Elijah to God, for, for this very reason, for this very day, this is why he specifically took Elijah to heaven. He's the only person in the Hebrew Bible specifically taken to heaven. And he returns in the day of the Lord. What's he supposed to know? Everything that you want to know about spiritual heaven. The creation of angels. The creation of the angel of his presence. How, how does God do that? How does he make persons? They don't have a world that, 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 that go through things like we do. And we go to school, we start in kindergarten, or preschool, on and on as we develop. He makes persons in an unseen realm. And, and many, many, many people have heard me say he controls my thoughts. And he does. 
because he's showing me what it's like in heaven when he is the information of your mind. Now, it's much more detailed with me because he's been with me and within me and without me from birth, him and the spirit, the angel. Uh, so they can literally be me and not very sure. I can't really tell the difference, but my thinking as a human being is not like it is. Uh, it's not like it was any longer. I'm not like anybody else on this planet. He is proving to me because he wants me to teach it to the Jewish people who seem to ignore the spiritual heaven. As though the Christians got a monopoly on it. They just, you know, everything's about the Messianic era. And oh, it's going to be so great. Now it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. It's because your rabbis, your sages, didn't understand the writings for the eras of antiquity. For those people of high ignorance who could not read, just listen to the story, a man can live to be, you know, a thousand. If you say a man of a hundred is but a child, then, you know, times ten, if you were going to live to be a hundred, it makes it a thousand. It's not going to happen. They didn't know that. We do. And if anybody thinks God's going to come down and start doing things different than he's ever done, well, they got that wrong, too. He's God, and he doesn't change. In other words, he's not going to come down and take every racist, bigot, <coughs> all peoples of the world, and all of a sudden they love those Jews. He's been working on me for 13 years, and I can barely see. <laughs> and there's been a great change in me and my personality. But, you know, uh, he didn't create human beings to be able to do that. In other words, he can't even do it. He said, now, I could make a creation with persons. Well, that would be a possibility. He said, but I don't want that. He said, I want every Jew that comes to the heaven with the name Israel shall do it. She goes through what all other Jews do. You're going to have a Messianic here and all of a sudden there's no adversity? Quit. My Jews will be like the Gentiles. I don't want those people. It's not what I'm looking for. Do you understand? I mean, it, it can't be that hard to understand. It's not going to happen. And he's livid about it. He's livid that they hadn't figured it out that I got to come tell him. An atheist for 50 years. 50 years. Before I even picked up a Bible. And that was because God said, let's go to the bookstore and pick up a Tanakh for you. And I said, what's a Tanakh? I didn't know anything. I had avoided religion and God uh, like a plague the entire life. So that's, uh, that's who's teaching me all this. And you know why? Because I'm Elijah. I've been in this fire refinement that is in other videos. And the entirety of the time is teaching me and taking me on visions. I've seen the heaven. I promise you, you don't want to miss it. Every Jew on this planet is sin free right now. But you better get back to observant Judaism or go to observant Judaism so you can remain sin free. Avoid the evil inclination. Honor God because he has forgiven it, you, all your sins and iniquities and he remembers them no more. He's given you a clean slate. Let's all start over. Just got back. Here's my covenant of friendship. Here's the things I'm going to do. And one of them is I'm going to place my sanctuary amongst you. He knew back when that Ezekiel wrote that covenant of friendship in uh, chapters 34 and 37. There would not be a temple here. And that's what that's what Elijah is told to do in Malachi 3. Clear the way for me. Clearing the way is having the third temple built. That's a heck of a task. But nobody wants to hear about Elijah. Well, Elijah. We don't know if he comes before or after Moshe. King Moshe. There's no King Moshe. Rambam. Well, I'm going to get to Rambam. I'm about to do a video on him and his two chapters of King Moshe that he fabricated and made up because he's a shepherd. There's almost nothing on him. So anyway, God, the information of your mind, believe me, there's a lot more on it and how he taught it to me and how they took over my very existence. Uh, and yet I'm still me. I'm still Keith. I feel just as much like me as I ever had. And they even had me do things like I used to do. I still 
uh, can, can do typos, I can move keys, I can get frustrated with things. <laughs> uh, it, it's an incredible, because I'm a man in divine being, and nobody's ever heard anybody try to explain what that is. But, uh, and I'm enveloped in his power as Ezekiel was. Enveloped. Uh, he can cut, he controls my, the entirety of my body. And uh, there's a heaviness to him. I don't just hear his voice. There's a heaviness. And it can be overbearing sometimes. And he can make it so you can't, if you let him do it, he can make it so you can't even breathe. Just put a little scare into you before you go to sleep. But this guy, his personality is something else. Yeah, they just fooling around. You know, they wake me up. Get up. I said, I've been asleep for two hours. Yeah, I know, but we've we'll, we'll got some stuff we want to do. See, there's some stuff to teach you. And the angel be laughing behind me. But anyway, this is interesting. Jesus tells us that he will return the time of lies in being. The life of the high priest who will see him return. The lives of the people, the towns of Caesarea Philip, the then living. The generation of lies in being during his life. The lies of his disciples. And the lives of those who pierced him with the spear after he died on the cross. That's what his generation is. When he's born, every single person that is already alive become the marker for his generation. At such time as every single one of them has died, including him, his generation's over. And that's what he's doing. He's, he's, he's saying, I'll be back before everybody dies. I'm going to be back in this generation. Now, why Christians are waiting for him today? I have no idea. He says when he's coming back, and he does not do it. Now, what has God done? God says, when you return to the land after desolation, this is Jeremiah 31, when you make it bloom again, when you restore the cities in Jerusalem, I'm going to make a new covenant with you. See the time is coming. See the time is coming. See the time is coming. Well, the new covenant is here. Where do we see it again? Malachi. Malachi 3. The last page of the prophets. The day of the Lord. This is what God announces the day of the Lord. And he says, the angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way. That would be the new covenant because there's only one other covenant, the covenant of friendship, and God grants that covenant with Moshe. So this is it, because that's what happened. After the Holocaust, land had laid desolate for over 2,000 years, came back, created Israel in 1948, the land began to bloom. This is his day. And so you're looking for for me. You look. You better be looking for Elijah. Who you're looking for, and I am him, and I am the prophet like Moses. God dictated these two books I read from all the time to me. That's how I learned all this information, and He taught me all the information of Elijah. That I would need to know uh, regarding heaven. It's a further proof. And as David, I bring the reckoning and dismissal of the shepherds. And I've been doing that in these writings, from the writings, God actually dictated it. But I mean, and he's the, director, he's the director and producer of these uh, YouTube videos. He tells me when to do one and what to do. Um, and uh, if necessary, since we got to get another temple, third temple for God to return to, Jesus has come back and he said, okay, okay, I'm coming back. You know, I always want to live with y'all. It's simple. You know, he's coming with the covenant of sin forgiveness. All the Jews don't have to be observant. All the Jews don't have to be sinners to get God to come back. No, he says, y'all come back, I'll come back. It's pretty easy. <laughs> see the time is coming. And it is coming. Of course, he, you know, he's absolute knowledge. And uh, he, he knows uh, everything absolutely about humanity from beginning to the very end. And he knew what Rome was going to do. And he knew there'd be a dinosaur, the Roman dispersal. And he knew one day the world was going to drive him back. He didn't have anything to do with that. He's just like a, he, he's just like a, a real stern father who still 
you know, saying the name Jerusalem and saying, I told you, this is your land, you're supposed to be taken care of, but I know you got driven from it, but you better come back, and if you don't, you get in trouble. Don't call me. It's tough, people. It's tough. Uh, but that's the answer to why didn't he stop the Holocaust or Eli or Weasel. Uh, he said, that's just not the way I think. I didn't stop Assyria from taking over the northern kingdom. I didn't stop Babylon from taking over the southern kingdom. And I didn't stop Rome from destroying the, uh, uh, the second temple. I don't do that. And I've got my reasons. That's what he'll tell you. He'll tell you, I am God. Then I question what I do. So, uh, yeah, well, I've lived with him for 13 years, believe me. I can give you a report of right now. Um, they are all dead now. All these people, Jesus references, they're all dead now for close to 2,000 years. Jesus spoke five prophecies of his return with a specific time frame, lies and then the measuring lies and the prophecies say the apostle paul said for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them their bodies disappear in the clouds, this is the rapture, uh, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. He said he was coming back quickly. On the last page of the Holy Bible in the book of Revelation, Jesus says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. He which testifies for these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Revelation chapter 22 verse 20. Jesus has never returned. For almost 2,000 years a dead in Christ and those alive during those years have waited to rise to heaven. His prophetic announcements did not happen. There are no Christians in heaven, according to Christianity. The time for a quick return has long since passed. There's no reason or, for, or foundation to believe by faith or otherwise that he will ever return. Heaven is only for the Jewish people. If the Christians, Noahides, and Gentiles in general want to see heaven, they will have to convert. Judaism. Let me add this. Jesus is a myth. He never existed. Period. He's a story. I got plenty, plenty of information on that in the books God dictated to me. He dictated an argument so sound that Jesus doesn't, uh, didn't exist. That uh, it's, you know, you could take, you, you, you could put a jury, as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, of, uh, of Christians. And convince them to come back if, if they were going to be truthful, come back with a with a verdict of he didn't exist. And there's reasons for that. I'm not going to get into those. Uh, there was one other thing. Okay, so there are no Christians in heaven according to Christianity. That's according to Judaism too. I'm building a heaven with the name Israel shall endure. I said, I'm not creating a heaven where humanity will endure. It's not in there. So if you want to go, you got to cover and be a Jew, Christians. And again, in chapter 51, I, my description of me is God's righteous servant to give them in 52 and completes in 53. In chapter 50, 51, God says to his people, I'm taking my cup, you know, my bowl, my cup of reeling, <laughs> no. I'm taking my cup, my bowl of reeling from you and giving it. <laughs> okay. 
my family goes for half a minute. I'm taking my cup, my bowl of reading, from you, and I am passing it to those who told you to get down on the ground, walked all over your backs. It's Christianity. They took the book of the children of the book, made it their book, the Old Testament, and told the Jews you don't know how to read it. It's prophetic of Jesus Christ. No, it's not. He has passed his wrath to the Christians and Gentiles in, in general for what this world has done to his chosen. Jesus did not return. God has returned, and I am his representation. I am his Moses. In addition, I'm Elijah for teaching heaven, and David for the reckoning dismissal, and, and I can purchase a new plot of land on Mount Zion. We don't have to have the Temple Mount. We don't have to have it. In fact, two things. One, it's been sullied by Islam. And two, it's not big enough. It's not close to big enough. But there's a descendant of David, which is proven by the Spirit of God alighting upon me, which is my anointment. I become the anointment, I become Moshiach. By description in 12 verses of 53, and three verses of 52 for that matter, I am God's righteous servant. He orchestrated my life to make sure I've said everything. Jesus Christ doesn't said any of them, except for verse 12 where it says he's a sinner because he is the biggest liar and deceiver in the history of mankind. And I have backed that up over and over from the book God dictated to me uh, on these YouTube. You can find them. You can find them. So God did what he said he was going to do. And we all know, we all know, there's no Allah. Because there's no, because there's no angel Gabriel. And that's where the Koran came from. Their, their theology is that the angel Gabriel came to Muhammad and said, God wants you to be his last messenger, his last prophet. They had that on their mosque, the last prophet of God. Or the, yeah, I think it's the last lost prophet of God. It's in sound. Well, they got something they need to hear. The last prophet is God's righteous servant, Elijah, the prophet like Moses and Moshe, David. Three religions all said to stem from and come from Abraham. Well, guess what? The God of Israel is here. I am his representation by description by anointment, by the Spirit within me, by my knowledge of heaven, and my ability to write these books for God as Moses wrote the Torah. Enjoy heaven. I've been there so many. I know everything about it. I've seen the very room that will be mine. I've seen the meeting places. I've seen, I've seen the creation of a new earth. I've seen God's I see what God's going to do. He's going to have another chosen. It's going to be a repeat. And if you're a Jewish person, you don't think you don't want to sit on your balcony and watch creation? All I saw was the beginning with volcanoes and tectonic plates moving.